Please shall we rise to pray. Father, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. We commit this day into your hands. The Bible says if we commit our thoughts unto you, our plan shall succeed. We are here for a purpose. We pray that you will send your Holy Spirit to be with us, that at the end of the day, we will achieve a common goal in building this dear nation forward. This and many other things we ask through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Respectfully, shall we remain standing for the anthem of the National Democratic Congress? It's a sound man, kindly give us the national, the party anthem of the NDC. <laughs> Party anthem of the NDC. Thank you very, very much. Good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen who have assembled in this auditorium here at the University of Professional Studies. And good afternoon to all Ghanaians and persons who are listening and watching this very important program from far and near. We've gathered here today for a very simple task. As you may be aware, on the 8th of March, 2023, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado, presented to Parliament what he called the message of the nation. That statement was full of deliberate falsehood, calculated to mislead the nation and the world at large. As Thomas Paine, an English-born American philosopher said, a body of men holding themselves accountable to nobody ought not to be trusted by anybody. President Ekufuado and the ruling MPP have time and again failed to render a true account of the state of our country. And therefore, Ghanaians cannot trust them as far as the state of affairs in our nation is concerned. This is why we in the NDC, the only viable alternative to the government, and I should say by the grace of God, the government in waiting, are duty bound to present to the nation the true state of our country. And we promise you that we will serve you with the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth in the address you are about to listen to. Such that by the time we live here, we'll all be equipped 
with the necessary facts and information about the true state of our nation. We will know where we are as a country, how we got here, why we are here, and how we can come out from the mess we find ourselves in. Before I introduce our speaker for today, permit me to acknowledge a few of the dignitaries we have in this auditorium and the many media networks who are streaming this program live on their esteemed platforms. First of all, I want to acknowledge members of the Functional Executive Committee of the National Democratic Congress. A round of applause for them. <clears throat> and let me especially single out our boss, my senior brother, Comrade Fifi Fiave Kweite, the General Secretary. I would also like to acknowledge members of our National Executive Committee, NEC of the party. I see a lot of regional chairmen and regional executives here. Members of NEC, can you wave at us? Let's acknowledge them with a round of applause. I also want to acknowledge our gallant members of parliament. I'm talking about the members of the minority caucus led by the able minority leader, Honorable Dr. Otto Forsen. <clears throat> minority Chief Whip, Honorable Kwame Agboja, we recognize your presence. Ladies and gentlemen, I also want to acknowledge the presence of the former Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Honorable Mareta Briapia. I see many leading members of the party on the front row who will be acknowledging you in due course. I also want to especially acknowledge the running mate for the NDC for the 2020 presidential elections, Professor Nana Jane Ubukwaje. My round of applause for her. Having done so, let me quickly acknowledge media networks who are streaming this program live. We are live on TV3, United Television, GH1 Television, Joy News, Metro TV, Kesbin FM, Bovina Accra and Kumase and all the affiliate stations, TVXYZ, CTV, Pan-African TV, Loud Silence Media, Accra FM, Ahoto FM, Power FM, Class FM, Asempa FM, Radio Gold, Weasel Television, Star FM, the NDC Communications Bureau pages on Facebook and YouTube, which are streaming this program live. In Central Region, we are live on Rich FM, Benya FM, Live FM, Sweet FM, Coastal FM, Obrumankuma FM, Kip FM, and Nice FM. In the Eastern Region, we are live on Radio 1 FM, Okwau FM, and in the Alpha Region, we are live on Adunu FM and Nananom FM. In the Northeast Region, we are live on Scap FM, Lom FM, Tizar Radio, and Lamarata FM. In the OT region, we are live on OT Radio, Buim FM, Ki FM, Niwasi Radio, and Sekpili. And in the Vota region, we are live on Sela FM, Hills FM, and Akpini Radio. As we move on, we shall acknowledge the many other media networks in other parts of the country who are streaming this program live. Now is the time for the moment, the time we are waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, our speaker for today is an institution and a colossus in the politics of this country, having served in many positions in many spheres of the nation. He started off as an assemblyman. He later became a member of the Consultative Assembly that drafted the 1992 Constitution 
representing the Wenchi West District. He then became a member of parliament for a period of 12 years. And while serving as a member of parliament, served as a member of the finance committee and even rose to become the vice chairman of the finance committee of parliament. As MP, he also served as a member of the Mines and Energy Committee and the Public Accounts Committee. He became a Deputy Minister for Food and Agriculture and at some point the Minority Spokesperson for Agri and Cuckoo Affairs for four years. He became the General Secretary of the NDC for the period between 2005 and 2022, 17 solid years. He's been a bank manager before, he's been a stockbroker before, and he's currently the national chairman and the leader of the great NDC. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very much. Let me begin by thanking the MC for the very good things said about me. Unfortunately, he left my most important profession, that is a power tapper. <laughs> I'm very proud to be a power tapper because there are some skills there. <laughs> that are not uh, known by ordinary people. My brothers and sisters, thank you very much for joining us both in this auditorium and through various media outlets for this critical national event on the state of our nation. A couple of weeks ago, President Nana Dodankwa Akufuado presented a message on the state of the nation to parliament as required by Article 67 of the 1992 Constitution. In that address, the president desperately attempted to put up an upbeat spin on a truly dismal national situation. However, even before he stepped up to fulfill that constitutional duty, all Ghanaians were fully aware that the state of our nation is hopeless. Ladies and gentlemen, hopelessness, recklessness, corruption, and leadership paralysis define the current state of our nation. In Ghana today, childhood vaccines are in short supply leading to a measles outbreak. False claims by the president of a global shortage have been exposed as Nigeria had excess vaccines to come to the rescue of Ghana's babies. We are going through a draconian debt restructuring program for the first time in our entire history thanks to the monumental mismanagement of the Akufuado Bahumia MPP government. 
Pensioner bondholders have had to engage in a historic public manifestation as they picketed at the Ministry of Finance. Cruel financial haircuts never before imagined have become a normalized feature of this reckless regime. All credit rating agencies have declared Ghana junk and bankrupt. Ghana has for the first time in more than half a century defaulted in its debt obligations. Youth unemployment is at an all-time high according to the 2020 population and housing census. Many businesses, banks and industries have collapsed and some have relocated to other countries in the sub-region. There have been massive job losses as a result. The Bank of Ghana has gone rogue and become a lawless money printing syndicate. Corruption has reached epidemic levels as epitomized by the special COVID-19 audit, which was an IMF bailout precondition. The president refuses to cut down the size of his bloated government. Human rights violations are on the ascendancy with the recent condemnable killing of a soldier and the unfortunate brutalities in Ashaman, all of which President Akufuado, as commander-in-chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, refused to speak about. We have a visionless, reckless, clueless, and wasteful government that has become impervious to advice and will attack anyone who dares to advise them, including members of the diplomatic community. We have a president who desecrates the holy name of God by claiming to be building a cathedral to honor God only to engage in dishonorable acts of diversion, corruption, inflationary pricing, and conflict of interest, which has earned Ghana the dubious reputation of digging the wells most expensive pit worth over 58 million United States dollars. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, we are all living the reality of the worst economic crisis in our nation's history, and there can be no denying of this. The President's address only served to deepen the anxiety hopelessness and uncertainty about the future of our country. It was all too clear that this government is grappling with the extent of the crisis they have created, let alone figure out what to do to bring us out of the mess. President Akufuadu failed to convince the Ghanaian people that there is any end in sight to the suffering and pain that his government's recklessness and misguided policies have brought on us. In the end, he cut an image of a leader who is hopelessly out of touch with the reality and genuine difficulties of his people. A president who believes that burying himself in a delusional bubble will make the problems vanish. Even worse was the continuation of the discredited attempt to evade responsibility for the economic atrocities that have led us to this depressing point. While they engage in vain glory, Ghanaians have to deal with the daily consequences of a collapsed economy. My brothers and sisters, the true state of our nation is well known to all of us. As the legendary Bob Marley noted in one of his songs, he who feels it knows his best. There has, however, been an effort by this administration to falsify the causes of the disaster we face while fleeing from responsibility. We in the NDC 
the only viable alternative to this bungling government, deem it necessary to straighten the records and expose the untruths presented to the nation through parliament by President Akufuado, and to highlight that our desired state is self-inflicted and deliberately so by this government. We are certain in our minds and believe seem to be true for all objective minds that Ghanaians are experiencing excruciating hardship because the Akufuado Baumia MPP government has offered utterly useless and reckless governance in the last seven years. They have shown no restraint in the level of recklessness in governance. My brothers and sisters, today, the public debt stock, which stood at 120 billion cities in 2016, has increased to a whopping 600 billion cities, while the debt of debt to GDP ratio that was 56% in 2016, now stands at 103%. It must be underscored that the president and his economic management or mismanagement team actively colluded with the Minister of Finance, Ken Ufurata, for the latter to benefit directly from these borrowings through numerous transaction fees schemes and scams from the bonds that, that Ghana issued. Ladies and gentlemen, you may have a look at the table that will shortly be shown on your screens. My brothers and sisters, despite being the luckiest and most resourced government in Ghana's history, the Kufuado Baumia MPP government has the least to show in terms of socio-economic development. This is because the MPP has used all your money mainly for consumption. This is contrary to the present claim that his government has used a large amount of the monies we borrowed on roads and construction. The president knows he deliberately misled Ghanaians with this claim because he's aware that only a minute amount of the overall resource envelope that has accrued to his government since 2017 has been used for the construction and rehabilitation of roads in this country. The truth is that only an abysmal 1.6% of the total resource envelope of 820 billion Ghana cities has been spent on roads by this government. Official government of Ghana records show that a whopping 93% of the 820 billion Ghana cities has been spent on consumption, including Akufuado's 20,000 euros an hour luxurious private jet travels across the world, hired over several months at the expense of the taxpayer. It is a tragedy that the president will classify routine minor road repairs such as resealing, reshaping, pothole filling, regravering, and even the silting of gutters as new road construction. <laughs> the claim that this government has constructed over 11,000 kilometers of new roads is false and should be completely disregarded. The president should hang his head in shame. Apart from the unsubstantial Tenable debt of the country. The budget deficit, which stood at 6.1% in 2016, now stands at a whopping 12% under the watch of the Baumia led economic management team. This is after it rose to an unprecedented high of 15.7% in 2020, 
owing to the reckless election-driven spending of the government. Per government's own figures, the rate of inflation which stood at 15.4 percent as of December 2016 now stands at a hyper rate of 52 percent and rising. The lending rate that stood at 25 percent on average in the year 2016 now stands between 38 percent and 45 percent whilst exchange rate depreciation that stood at 9.6% for the year 2016 now stands at 23% for the first two months of this year alone. This is after the CD depreciated by over 54% in the first 11 months of last year, 2022, making it the worst performing currency in the world. From a stable credit rating of B- in 2016 under the NDC Mahama administration, Ghana's economy has been downgraded by all credit rating agencies to below junk status, owing largely to the country's default on its debt obligations, again under the watch of Dr. Baumia. After supervising an increase in the rate of unemployment from 8.4% as at 2016 to 14% in 2021, the Baumia-led economic management team has now placed a total freeze on public sector employment. Their much touted You Start program that was supposed to be a $1 billion investment in youth startups to create jobs has also turned out to be another spectacular scam. These debilitating conditions, in addition to high tax payments, high import duties, and the draconian debt restructuring program of government are suffocating the private sector leading to the collapse of many businesses and loss of jobs, such that five foreign construction firms, namely Contractor, Sino Hydro, Rolida, Amandi, and Vea Build, who are working on various foreign-funded projects in the country, have laid off thousands of Ghanaian workers in the last few months. Ladies and gentlemen, the destruction of the economy by the Akufuado Baumia MPP government permeates every sector of the nation. For instance, growth rate of the agriculture sector has seen a decline from 2.7% in 2016 to 0.7% in 2022. And I would say, this is the harvest from the Planting for Food and Jobs program, <laughs> which has received billions of taxpayer and donor funds. Similarly, the growth rate for the manufacturing sector has also declined from 7.9% in 2016 to 4.5% in 2022 thereby calling into question the impact of the much vaunted 1D1F program. Further, the growth rate for the construction sector has also declined from 8.4% in 2016 to 4.2% in 2022, despite government's claim about borrowing to build roads and other infrastructure. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the true state of our nation. It is evidence for all to see that boastful and lofty rhetoric is not the same as competence. Quite to the contrary, with the MPP, empty snooganeering 
is their way to hide their lack of appreciation of substantive issues. Never again, and hopefully so, should Ghanaians permit themselves to be tormented by a group of boastful persons who feel self-entitled to misgovern. Let us not underrate what it means for our collective sanity when a president has an uncomfortable relationship with the truth, constantly shifts blame to others, and conveniently avoid difficult topics. My brothers and sisters, whereas the president asserts, maybe because of the severity of the present difficulties, or maybe because it suits their preconceived agenda, some people are unwilling to accept that we are on a good, we were on a good trajectory until the arrival of COVID-19. Nothing could be further from the truth. Ghanaians want relief from the socio-economic pain and hardship visited on them by the MPP administration and not flimsy excuses. Ghanaians want a government that will be truthful, even in difficult times, and listen to them in humility. Incontrovertible facts show that Ghana's economy showed signs of serious challenges even before COVID-19 struck, a point that was made by the country director of the World Bank, Mr. Pierre Laporte. For instance, way before the first case of COVID-19 was recorded in Ghana in March 2020, the public debt had increased from 120 billion in 2016 to 225 billion in 2019, representing an increase of 105 billion in the country's debt stock. COVID was nowhere. Ukraine and Russia had not even thought about fighting. Our debt to GDP ratio had increased from 56% in 2016 to about 70% in 2019. That is including the Esla, Dachi, and other hidden debts. Before COVID-19, the debt servicing amount had increased from 11 billion in 2016 to 37 billion in 2019 and constituted 91% of tax revenue. There was no COVID, no Ukraine and Russia, and the queen was still alive, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no earthquake in Turkey. Also, the budget deficit had exceeded the legally acceptable threshold of 5% and had hit 7.5% in 2018 and 7% in 2019. There was no COVID. Again, before COVID-19, the Ghana CD in 2019 was plummeting in double digits, leading to the setting up of a 40-member committee by the government to investigate the causes of the alarming depreciation of the national currency. Surprisingly, the committee excluded the chairman of the economic management team, a move described by many analysts as a vote of no confidence in the competence of His Excellency Vice President Mahmoud Baumia by his own government. In fact, per paragraph 61 of this government's own 2020 media budget review statement, and I beg to quote, in the year to December 2019, the Ghana CD cumulative depreciated by 12.9% against the US dollar, compared with 8.4% depreciation in 2018. Against the British pound and euro, the Ghana CD cumulatively depreciated by 15.7% and 12% respectively, compared with 3.3% and 3.9% 3 
over the same period in 2018, unquote. Far from being the cause of economic collapse, COVID-19, in fact, brought the Akufuado Baumia government an unprecedented windfall of about 30 billion Ghana cities to manage and mitigate the impact of the pandemic. Unfortunately, this was largely wasted on election-related expenses. This amount excludes proceeds from the obnoxious COVID-19 levy, which Ghanaians continue to pay till date. My brothers and sisters, according to the Auditor General, only 11.7% of this amount was spent on government COVID-19, with the remainder of about 18 billion being channeled into so-called budget support. There is no gain saying the fact that the coronavirus pandemic affected all countries in the world, including our next door neighbors, Benin, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso, and Nigeria. Whereas these countries manage their resources prudently, thereby recording deficits below 8% and debt to GDP ratios of below 65%, the Akufuado Baumia government borrowed excessively and spent recklessly for election purposes, thereby recording a disastrous deficit of 15.7% and a debt-to-GDP ratio of about 80% in 2020. It is instructive to note that in the year 2020, when COVID was at its peak, all our neighbors recorded a budget deficit of less than 8%. Burkina Faso recorded a deficit of 5.7%. Cote d'Ivoire recorded a deficit of 5.6%. Nigeria recorded a deficit of 5.8%, and Senegal recorded a deficit of 6.4%. But Ghana alone recorded a deficit of 15.7% because of the reckless election-driven expenses and wastage the Akufuado Baumia MPP government engaged in. My brothers and sisters, did COVID-19 affect Ghana any more than it did to our neighbors? How come none of these countries who were all affected by the pandemic are recording double-digit deficits and high debt-to-GDP ratio of over 100%? How come none of these countries are recording inflation rates of over 50% like Ghana? How come none of this has defaulted on their debt repayments? How can none of them has been downgraded to junk status and have been locked out of the international capital market? How come none of these countries are going through a domestic debt restructuring? How come none of these countries are visiting cruel financial haircuts on their citizens, including pensioners. How come none of these countries are experiencing childhood vaccine shortages? To paraphrase Dr. Baumia, how did COVID-19 jump from Niger jump over Nigeria, Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, and other neighbors of ours to attack and destroy only Ghana's economy? Ladies and gentlemen, the truth of the matter is that the economic mess we have on our hands has largely been brought about by the reckless spending, excessive borrowing, and, eco and crash economic mismanagement by the Baumia-led economic management team, and not any external factors as government will have us believe. The last thing that is required in time of crisis is a leader whose words ring hollow and who cannot be trusted. In truth, Akufuado has proven Stephen Levinsky right when he wrote in his famous book, How Democracies Die. And this was what he said. Quote, 
for a demagogue who feels besieged by critics and shackled by democratic institutions, crisis open a window of opportunity to silence critics and weaken rivals. Indeed, elected autocrats often need crisis. External threats offer them a chance to break free, both swiftly and very often legally." Unquote. During this crisis, nothing the president says can be believed because everything he has said has proven to be untrue. Ghanaians have come to realize that the claim by the president that he knew how to revive a dead economy was a scam. Quote, we are a proud nation. We are not going to IMF, was a scam. There will be no haircuts, was a scam. The promise to build 88 district hospitals within a year was a scam. Agenda 111 project was a scam. The promise to abolish road tolls was a scam. The promise to convert toll booths into modern, ultra modern public toilets on our highways was a scam. <laughs> The claim that there was a global shortage of childhood vaccines was a scam. No state funds will finance the National Cathedral was a scam, designed to fleece the state by the likes of Reverend Victor Kusibuatin or Kwabena Adu Jemfi, whichever sounds better <laughs> to you. David Ajayi and Kerry Summers. Ladies and gentlemen, another deliberate falsehood peddled by the president in his infamous address was the claim that his government has constructed more NCA licensed fiber optic cables than any other government in the Fourth Republic. We submit that the total of 93% of fiber optic cables the president claimed credit for constitute the greatest telecom scam ever. At least, the MPP must give credit to the NDC for providing the 900 kilometer Eastern Corridor fiber optic network running from Ho to Boku with a link from Yendi to Tamale and an extension to the campus of the University of Health and Allied Sciences. <laughs> the 300 kilometer Accra Tema Metro Fiber, the wireless broadband of 119 4G LTE base station to power the Gota phone system. And let me add, the Ministry of Communication, the National Data Center, the Accra Digital Center, and the National Communications Authority are all housed by NDC constructed edifices. <laughs> when a president constantly shows such blatant dishonesty, it crashes the accountability mechanism. My brothers and sisters, let me now turn to a, another very important topic, corruption. President Akufuado's silence on corruption in his infamous address was very loud. It was as loud as his guilt. Evidently, corruption has defeated his family and friends' government. Instead of confronting this canker head on, President Akufuado has constituted himself into a corruption clearing agent. Ever willing to whitewash himself and any of his appointees who double in corruption, even before investigative processes commence. The president's action and complicity 
have emboldened many of his officials, not least his Vice President Alaji Baumia, whose name has come up in multiple corruption scandals such as the PDS scandal, the shady gold for oil deal, the stolen rice scandal, and the famous appearance fee scandal. My brothers and sisters, President Akufuado's misguided declaration that nothing dishonorable was done with the COVID funds adds to the litany of failed attempts to conceal the rot that has left many scandalized following the publication of the special audit report in, in COVID-19 funds by the Auditor General of Ghana. First, it was the Attorney General pretending to take umbrage to the publication of the report. Then comes the Chief Corruption Clearing Agent himself, even before the said report is, laid, is considered by Parliament. How does President Akufuado reasonably expect Ghanaians to accept as honorable the Auditor General's finding that COVID-19 related payments totaling more than 543 million Ghana cities were made to various service providers outside of the Ghana Integrated Financial Management Information System in clear violation of Regulation 61 of the Public Financial Management Regulation 2019 LI 2378. How? How about the Auditor General's finding that medical equipment valued at nearly 250,000 United States dollars, which were procured with COVID funds and subsequently issued to some specific health facilities did not reach these health facilities. How? Mr. President, I put it to you that there is everything dishonorable with the finding by the Auditor General that a company known as Modern Security Printers Limited, which was awarded a contract to conduct public education on COVID-19 safety protocols for students at an outrageous cost of 1.5 million Ghana cities has been paid in full for no work done. I further put it to you, Mr. President, that there is everything dishonorable with the damning finding by the Auditor General that cash payments totaling almost 12 million Ghana cities to caterers who provided hot meals during the three weeks of partial lockdown were all retired with honor certificates instead of receipts, and that other COVID-19 related payments to caterers totaling 5.6 million Ghana cities were neither backed by receipts nor honor certificates. Again, I put it to you, Mr. President, that the government management of COVID-19 funds cannot be said to be honorable when the Auditor General could not verify bills and validate dubious payments amounting to 37.6 million Ghana cities by the Ministry of Finance to NGOs and private individual water provided for the provision of so-called free water. Also, it is dishonorable for officials of the Kojo Nkroma led, Kojo Opon Nkroma led Ministry of Information to line their pockets with COVID funds under the guise of risk allowances meant for frontline health workers. It is the height of cruelty for funds which were meant to save lives during a public health crisis to have been looted and misappropriated in this bizarre manner. Brothers and sisters, despite the desperate attempt by the chief corruption clearing agent to sweep these serious crimes under the carpet one thing which will tarry for ages to come is how the covid 19 pandemic became a corruption bonanza and a milking cow 
for President Akufuado and his officials to cream state resources in the most obscene manner. It should come as little surprise, therefore, that the President has become a clearing agent who actually rewards unscrupulous members of his government with national awards. Instead of the President sacking the serially incompetent Minister for Health, Kwekwe Ajimaimenu, he decided to confer national honors on the Minister's corruption and included even more corrupt appointees and companies to desecrate the revered national award ceremony. Dr. Nkrumah established this national award scheme with the view to honoring people and institutions that have distinguished themselves in service and sacrifice to propel Ghana's growth and development. Mr. President, our nation's founder, Kwame Nkrumah, did not intend for the National Award Scheme to honor criminality by cleverly sprinkling and sandwiching a few meritorious awardees among nation records. This year's awards and the inclusion of these shady characters, some of whom are under parliamentary inquiry, can at best be viewed as part of the systemic denigration of our statehood. And I'm happy that some decent awardees never participated in such a scheme. It also reveals the weakened and depraved state of our nation. A nation where those who scrutinize government dubious expenditures are chased out of office as auditor generals, the domilevos of this world. A nation where journalists who unearth corruption are harassed, intimidated, and sometimes murdered, the Ahmed Swalis of this world. A nation where members of parliament who diligently carry out their constitutional mandate of oversight and expose crimes are persecuted that Samuel Okujato, a black was an ato forces of this world. And a nation where those who fight corruption are fought back and are even described as terrorists by the courts. The Anas Armiyao Anas of this world. On this note, let me urge Ghanaians and the diplomatic community not to be intimidated by the president's unprecedented attack on the German ambassador during his state, his message on the state of the nation in parliament. We urge all true Democrats to join hands with the National Democratic Congress to resist the suppression of free speech by the Akufuado Baumia MPP government. My brothers and sisters, another example of the corrupt schemes under this government is the Jensa Energy Deal, which is stifling the Ghana Gas Company and may end up collapsing this monumental NDC legacy project. Under this corrupt deal, the government has decided to allow persons known to be affiliated to the MPP to build a private gas plant so GMPC can sell national ga natural gas from our oil fields to them at one third the price at which they sell to Ghana Gas, which is state owned. The whole idea is to cream off hundreds of millions of dollars in unreasonable and supernormal profit into the pockets of the greedy MPP cronies. As chairman of the NDC, I wish to serve notice that we will vigorously oppose this glaring theft of national resources for private aid. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the NDC believes institutions must work and the standards must even be higher for independent constitutional bodies that are legally clothed with independence to work independently. This is why
we in NDC maintain that the Electoral Commission must abandon its intransigence and listen to wise counsel in order to save Ghana's democracy. Why would the EC insist on making the Ghana card the sole document for registration of voters when the National Identity Registration Law allows for the guarantor system as an identification mechanism? Why? In the interest of our democracy and development, the Jim Manson led EC should for once agree with the opposition NDC, civil society organizations, and other well-meaning Ghanaians, including the venerable Dr. Kojo Afarijan, Ghana's longest serving former chairman of the Electoral Commission and foremost authority on electoral issues, who insists that the guarantor system must be maintained in our electoral system. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, another reason for Ghana's economic collapse is the expenditure on the bloated size of government. As has been revealed by our hard-working members of parliament, between January and September of 2022, the Akufuadu Baumia presidency wasted the taxpayers' money as follows. The president's operational enhancement expenditure, whatever that means, cost the suffering Ghanaian taxpayer a mind-boggling 59.4 million Ghana cities. The four bills at the president alone cost the taxpayer 51.1 million Ghana cities. President Akufuado's regional tours last year cost 16.9 million Ghana cities. Ties and batteries for official vehicles at the presidency alone cost Ghanaians 15 million Ghana cities. A cabinet retreat, cabinet meeting outside Accra, <laughs> cost the taxpayer a colossal 4.8 million Ghana cities. Payment for new vehicles cost the suffering Ghanaian taxpayer 6.5 million after Nanado had declared that they would not purchase any new vehicles. Payment for networking and ICT equipment cost the Ghanaian taxpayer 6.6 .6 million Ghana cities. An amount of 10.4 million was spent on the Independence Day celebration in Cape Coast. 10 million for Independence Day celebration. An amount of 4 million was spent by the Vice President on so-called emergency activities. Whatever that means, nobody knows. Telecommunications and internet services from January to September alone cost the suffering Ghanaian taxpayer a shocking 20 million CDs. And last but not the least, furniture, expenditure on office furniture and fittings cost 7 million CDs. Further evidence of the waste of scarce resources can be seen in the many needless political appointees at the presidency, in the midst of the worst economic crisis in living memory, the president continues to make ridiculous and superfluous appointments at the presidency, such as the following. Youth Ambassador for Diaspora Affairs. <laughs> Policy Associate. Chief Executive of Public Sector Reforms, Overseer of the National Cathedral, <laughs> Church Relations Manager, Diaspora Church Mobilization Officer, Policy and Coordinator Analyst, Focal Person, La Francophonie, Technical Director, La Francophonie. 
Coordinator, Special Development Initiative Secretariat. Director of Special Projects. Manager of Operations and Programs. Five Technical Communication Assistants. Technical Advisor, Zongo Development Authority. Two Technical Advisors, Special Development Initiative Secretariat. Technical Advisor, Political Affairs. Presidential Staffer, NAPCO. Office Management Executive Associate. Technical Director to the Presidential Advisor on Media. <laughs> <laughs> and Data Manager. Enough of this disaster of a government that continues to waste the already battered public purse with reckless abandon. We demand an immediate dismissal of this redundant hangers on at the presidency. In this regard, we wish to advise the Akufuadu Baumia MPP government to consider the detailed alternative policy proposals put out by former President John Dramani Mahama in his famous address to the nation on building the Ghana we want, which was delivered in this very auditorium on 27th October 2022. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, we in the NDC love our dear nation, Ghana. We shall neither prize partisan politics above policy, nor personal interests above patriotism. Therefore, we shall continue to engage our members of parliament, civil society organizations, religious organizations, organized labor, and all stakeholders to fashion out a viable and sustainable alternative strategy to save Ghana's economy and democracy. Saving our economy also means saving our democracy. So we expect the president to drastically cut down the size of his government to signal a new beginning. We further expect the government to be tolerant to dissent. Heed the calls for implementation of the constitutional review committee recommendations, eschew profligacy, desist from nepotism and corruption, sanction corrupt officials, and be honest about the true state of the nation. My <laughs> brothers and sisters, it is obvious that President Akufuado, who continues to reveal in the largesse of high office, does not appreciate the present day reality of the Ghanaian people. The president continues to live in his own world, far removed from yours and mine, that he fails or neglects to appreciate the true state of the nation. It is absolutely important to awaken President Akufuado and the ruling MPP to the uncomfortable but frank true state of Ghana today. A nation of many living in fear of where to find their next meal, leaving many parents to endure sleepless nights. The true state of our dear nation no longer lies in flowery speeches laced with political chicanery that never accept responsibility for anything. Neither does it lie in the abstract theories that blame personal feelings on events that have no significant impact on our lives. The true state of the nation is when a ball of kinky, which used to sell between 50 pesos and one CD in December 2016, is now being sold for between four CDs and five CDs. The true state of Ghana is that a sack of maize, which used to sell 
for 170 CDs in 2016 is now being sold for 900 CDs as at February 2023. The true state of the nation is where a bag of Gino rice, five kilos, which used to go for 25 CDs in December 2016, is now being sold for 185 CDs. Similarly, a tuba of yam, which used to sell for five CDs, is now being sold for 25 CDs. While a bag of sachet water, which used to sell for uh, one CD 50 pesos, in 2016, is now being sold for 10 CDs as at February 2023. Also, a bag of cement, which sold for 27 CDs in December 2016, is today selling at a staggering 90 CDs. And last but not the least, even sanitary pad, which used to sell for two CDs 50 pesos in December 2016, is today selling for 20 CDs. When everything is said and done, this is the true state of our nation, Ghana. This is what we feel when we go to the market. This is what we feel in our pockets. This is our everyday reality. A reality in which babies do not have vaccines, leading to a measles outbreak. The youth do not have jobs. The middle class faces imminent extinction. The elderly are being deprived of their life savings by the very government that swore to protect them. This is not the Ghana we deserve. This is not the Ghana our forebears toiled and sacrificed for. The NDC shall not be complicit in this mess. We are determined to work assiduously with the Ghanaian people through our superior patriotic policy alternatives and impressive track record to rescue our dear nation from the abyss. We are certain with God on our side, we shall succeed. Thank you very much, and may God bless our homeland, Ghana. Shall we give our national chairman another rousing round of applause? And while at it, Mr. Soundman, get ready to play Yanarai Asasini. Please, shall we resume our seats? We shall sing that before we leave the auditorium. Wow, what a speech. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe you would agree with me that address you just listened to reflects accurately the true states of our dear nation. Thank you very much, our national chairman and leader, for that brilliant presentation. I don't know what the key highlights were for you, but for me the key highlight was a statement the national chairman made that hopelessness, recklessness, corruption, and leadership paralysis define the current state of our nation. And then the one which I'm sure all of us will not forget as we leave this auditorium. He says, Ghanaians have come to realize that the claim by the president that he knew how to revive a dead economy was what? The claim that we are a proud nation and that we were never going to go to the IMF was what? The promise by the president that there would be no haircuts was also what? The promise to build 88 district hospitals within one year was what? The Agenda 1-1 hospital project was what? The promise to abolish road tolls was what? The promise to convert toll booths into ultra-modern public toilets was what? And the claim that there was a global shortage of childhood vaccines was what? Thank you very much. Let's give our national chairman another round of applause.
Now, I want to once again acknowledge all the media networks who are streaming live this very important program on their channels. Um, in Bunu East, we've been live on Akina Radio, Winners FM, Zone FM, Atobu FM, Fabia FM. In the Western North region, we've been live on Akwaba FM. In the Bono region, the region of the national chairman, we've been live on Tyne FM and Nsroma FM. In Upper West, we've been live on Home Radio. We've been live on Radford FM, WFM, Golu FM, Tumpani FM, and Radio Mark. In the Western region, we've been live on Sharp FM, Radio 360 FM, Empire FM, Spice FM, Western Radio, Royal FM, Abimpa FM, and Trinity FM. In Savannah, we've been live on Inkligi FM, Kasha FM, and Magic FM. Again, I want to recognize some of the leading members that I didn't initially recognize, leading members of the NDC. I see um, a man who is a mentor to some of us and a guide, Uncle Tutubiku Kwachi is here. A round of applause for him. Um, we also have another leading member, Mr. Idiana is here. A round of applause for him. Honorable Sylvester Tete is here. Oh, and then we have one of the aspirants in the presidential primaries of the great NDC here. Dr. Kwamna Dufo is here. A round of applause for him. Yes, yes. And then we have all of you here. A round of applause for yourselves. I want to specially recognize the team that worked hard to make this program possible. Um, we recognize the contribution of Comrade Joseph Mukhtari Bawa, Comrade Stan Dogbe, Dr. Manebuama, my brother Felix Sufusu Kwache, Uncle Tutubi Kwache, my sister Ububia Dakon, and our General Secretary, Honorable Fifi Kwete. But let me especially, very, very specially, recognize the support the NDC Minority Caucus led by Dr. Ato Fossin gave to this program. This program was made possible by the, their support. I'm sure we've all enjoyed the exceptional and brilliant presentations they have made on the so-called seat of the nation address that was presented by President Ekufuado to Parliament. Haven't we? They've done excellently well. A round of applause for our MPs. Is the sound man, is the sound ready? Okay, so shall, before we take the closing prayer, shall we rise on our feet and sing Yenara Assassini? Yenara Assassini, and the Resume our seats. Thank you very much. We started with a Christian prayer, and so we will end with a Muslim prayer. Comrade Ibrahim, can you come to the stage and give us that Muslim prayer? For our friends in the media here, we'll plead with you to give us a few minutes. When we close, we'll be with you and make sure you get the speech which was delivered before you leave. And so let's rise to our feet and take the closing prayer before we depart. Okay, he says we can sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Let's pray. Hakalilai wa dahula shari kala wa shari anna Muhammad abdahu wa rasulah. Lahu li muluku wa lahu li hamdu. Yuhi wa imitu wa huwa ala kulli shayi kadir. Huwa al awwal wa al ahir wa zahir wa baati wa kulli shayi alim. Rabbana aatina fi dunya asana wa fi al akhirat asana wa kina azaban nar. Rabbana la atizu kulubana baada izi haditana 
وحب لنا من لدن كرامة إنك أنت الوهاب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إدنا السرات المستقيم سرات الذين أنعمت عليهم غير مكذوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين All right, so ladies and gentlemen, on behalf